Hey, everybody who is still at work on Friday. <laughs> You're trying to squeeze in there? Until it gets fixed. All right. Yeah. Hey, welcome. <laughs> you shouldn't have leaned over. I was no. adjusting it. <laughs> All right, we're doing a double. Come on. We're doing a double. Is anyone still pineapple poisoning? Someone asks. No. Pineapple. Who had pineapple poisoning? Pineapple what poisoning? is that? From the pineapple cookies yesterday. Oh no, I'm good. I worked that out. No, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. That's no, it's Captain fine. It was TMI. Not, it just that's, didn't. It just no, didn't taste not, good. It's it not was, TMI. That's just biology. I mean. Yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. What a lot of biology. TMI? That's TMI. Thing, things. Right. Balance. We're not eating a snack in this it episode. It was. It was just not. It didn't taste well, but it didn't mess me up. Right. So let's jump into our back talk. We're doing a double best top sellers of the month. Double, uh, double. Mostly because we just didn't do one last month, a lot of busyness. So we're doing double March down. and April top sellers back to back. I have a March and April best of the month coming out tomorrow. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Uh, the, ah, I got it. And so anyway, our information is from Cool Stuff Games, large online retailer of games. Great stuff, great prices, great selection. And that's how we have the information. Yeah. Let's do it. Just cool as a stuff. heads up, though, we always stock. we always cut games from here where like cool stuff will have some sale to blow games out, mm -hmm. and we always cut that because yeah, it's, that information isn't quite the same. What All right, so we're starting with regular I'm board games. Playing with a rubber band. March, <laughs> March number ten. I think this one is a reprint. That's why it's back on the hotness list and an expansion for it came out recently. It's a deck building game from a person who has only made one deck building game. But they've made like 2,000 other games. Most of them small card games. Oh, oh Reiner Knizia's uh, Race Through the Jungle. Quest for El Dorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. <laughs> Race Through you the Jungle. You were close. <laughs> hey, man. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, well, no, this one is this, this is one's doing game. well. No, no, this I'm not saying it's a bad game. Well. It was an yeah. award winner recently, wasn't it? I think it got some of the. Some big German award, or at least it was nominated. It was nominated for something, yeah. yeah. It's a good game. It's a good game, and the expansion was good. I like that. Number nine is Feudum, of all things. Feudum? I yeah. This would be one of those games that came and went. Well, is this one of those uh, barn door busters sale thingies that we're supposed to not no, no, include? No, no, it's not. Here's what I think happened. It just recently had its big expansion mm. on Kickstarter. And so people are like, oh, uh, I can go buy the game right now. It's, it's That's good timing. I right. don't see that that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. That is interesting that the fact that there is an expansion available makes some people buy the base game. So they Just can because in case I like it, yeah. there is more because we are ravenous. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I won't yeah. buy it. Because once I consume it, there might be nothing else. But if there's an expansion, okay, now I'll buy it. Isn't that crazy? That's a little yeah, bit weird. Yeah, yeah. All right, number eight was on our list last time. A, actually, it's the only game I think from Eggert Spiel on the list this this week month. It was number four last time, and that's Blackout Hong Kong. Nice. This, this one surprises well too, me yeah. because it's doing well sales wise, although it did not get the critical acclaim that Fister's games often do. The he, mostly people said this one was good. He deviated yeah. from the script. I think that's honestly what it is. By making a game that was not set in Euro game Middle Ages yeah. time? No, I think it's just because the board was super dark. Okay, well, then that's into it. It ties into it. But I think it was because it was boring. No, the rest of them are boring, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Number I haven't played this. I'm kidding. Seven. I'm kidding, Internet. Number seven, uh, new to the list. Not new to the list. It's been on the list many, many times. The mega hit Gloomhaven. Wow, this is number seven? Oh, how the mighty art fallen. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, a game people, in the top ten. It's pretty good. Yeah, people are buying their second copies now. This is, that's, this they wore well, their first one out. <laughs> you got to build the bricks to that house. You know? It's like, wait, I have, a, I have an empty shelf. One game. I got it. <laughs> Now, the very opposite, from large to small, the sequel to this game we just got in the mail a couple days ago. Hmm. This game, which is called uh, That's So Clever, Gans Sean Clever. Shun Clever. Yeah, this one's getting the love. I mean, really, I yeah. think at this point in time, roll and rights are throw at the wall. People are like, here's one, here's one, here's one. And most are just 
disappearing. It's kind of crazy. This is the one that's kind of risen to the top, at least in the past year. I tried to well, get people gotta, to teach this to me at the gathering, and they wouldn't. Because this was around at the last gathering. Wait, What's wrong with you? Wait, they true. wouldn't teach? <laughs> They're like, no? We, yeah, because they wanted, I mean, I, I think it was because they were tired. I think that's what they said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, Can you, oh, we're tired. So if Tori's ready, he goes back there and played TI-4. I know, that's right? right? That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. The first time I played this was a year ago. I remember right. that. And All right. Again, it was a critical darling, or is. Number five was criticized by many people. It was a reprint of a game, but this one was very expensive, and people said it wouldn't sell, but I guess it does. And that is the anniversary edition of Stone Age. Wow, okay. I, and That's I making that a resurgence. That is amazing because people were going bonkers about how. Old expensive this game is. Maybe that's why it's sold though, because on cool stuff it's cheaper than many other places. Yeah, maybe and there's so. People are like, well. Also it says anniversary and it in the corner you'll notice there's a little flame that says limited edition, which means buy it now <laughs> or you'll never see it again except yeah. in bargain bins for yeah. the next ten years. So it's like uh yeah like uh, what was it? Pandemic Iberia? Yeah. <laughs> Run to the booth, Eric Summer. Run! They, they're limited editions. Oh, we give Eric garbage about that every convention. I ran with him. <laughs> Still can't feel my right leg. <laughs> All right, number four has been on the list before, and that is Chronicles of Crime. This is hot. And also, the new expansion doesn't hurt having that out, like you said. That's right. That's right. Ooh, but got a man versus meeple thingy on there. Speaking of. Hot. Ooh. This next game is brand new. I reviewed it a couple months ago, but when we were at the gathering, everybody was playing this. I'm hearing brand about it everywhere. New. It's the Res Arcana game. Oh, Res Arcana. Oh. This one's doing really well. So good, y'all. So good. Did you play it? I wanted to. Psych, son. I well, you said you like it better as a multiplayer, I think. I liked it as a good I, I played it with uh, four and two. I like it. But you played it twice. I like it I've better with it like two. Four times by now. I'm sorry, I don't have time to teach you right now. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I think it's know. awesome. I, re I really liked it. Yeah, it's great. No great one game. here beside me. All right, number two was on the list last week, last month, also in spot two, and that's Deep Space. D6. This is ha hanging what? on, man. I don't get it because we got this game. I did the unboxing and I thought, um, sorry. Uh, I thought, <laughs> <laughs> spoiled my number one there. I thought. Well, what's number one, though, going to be? <laughs> the components for this were like very blase. Yeah, and but boring. isn't it also like $7 or something? Well, you played it by now, right? No, no, I haven't. Oh, okay. It looks awful. <laughs> it does really look awful. I'm sorry. I don't know. I mean, I want games to look pretty. Uh, it might be great, and I'll. I need to make time and play because it is a solitaire game, but I don't know. I'm surprised it's doing so well. That's good. All right, why don't you... Uh, all right, so number one, let me guess, all right? Uh, <laughs> is it a, uh, I mean, is this some sort of like push your luck game? It's, all right, it's, a, big box? it's a foul game. It was, it was number four last wow. month, so it went, up, it went up to number one. This one, I believe, this is one of those games that I'm seeing played. A lot. This Conventions. Is, mm -hmm. This is a, could be an evergreen, I think. Uh, the biggest problem with this game is the pieces. I've seen like four different ways that the pieces have been upgraded at the different conventions. Some people put them in those oh, coin sure. counters. They got the pieces I have. Board Game Geek has those new, mm -hmm. oh, the ones Board Game Geek are awesome. So, Quacks hmm. of Quedlingburg. Quacks. I have yet to play it. All right, let's jump now to, that was March. Now we're in April. Top 10 games. Better games, because they're newer. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. Number 10 dropped. Gloomhaven. <laughs> Down from seven. <laughs> oh, the mighty have fallen. <laughs> Come off, on. <laughs> off the list next month. Uh, That's it. It's had its day in the sun. All right, number nine is a newer game that I keep meaning to play, and it just, I took it with me. Met the publisher when I was in L.A., and then I was like, I don't want to ask the publisher to teach me this game. And then I didn't play it. And that's Call to Adventure. I'm really pumped oh, about this one. I keep meaning You haven't to... played this yet. No, oh, it looks really good, had. though. Yeah, I thought you had. Hmm. All right, number eight. <laughs> Sam, it got back on the list, despite your best efforts. Gloomhaven again? No. Oh, oh, it's a small oh, little oh, game oh, with a capital yeah, baby, G. The mind. The mind. <laughs> yeah. It must have been out of stock in March. That's all I can think. <laughs> All right, then number seven, dropping down from number seven. two in the previous month. 
Deep Space D6, but still on the list. That's amazing. That's, that's at least three months in a row, maybe four, where this is in the top ten. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's proof that gamers just don't have a lot of friends. All by myself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, number six. I played mine by myself. I did pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Just the hanging out with I should play this one next. <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk to yourself. You just That's broke true. The you broke the rules. You oh, cheated. No. You cheated in a solitaire I'll try again game. without the speaking. Yeah. All right. Number six is one of the hottest games from last year, and that's Architects of the West Kingdom. That's good stuff. And I think that's just because it probably came back in stock. The next one, same. The next one, I know it's because it came back in stock, and that is Teotihuacan. Sound it out, Dale. T O Wakan Wakan Teotihuacan Wakan Teotihuacan Who? Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. Look at the picture of the ziggurat and smile. All right, number four was on the list last month. It's Ganshan Clever went up from six. Are you kidding me? Wow. So both I'm March surprised and the April. sequel is the sequel out now. The I don't twice think as so. clever I think I game. I just got it. If it's out, it's out and very limited. Sure, right. That's gonna do well, I'm sure. Also. However, speaking of staying hot, once again, Raz Arcana. Very, this very is now eight. hitting in a big way. There's no, there's no question. It was three both times in a row. Um, and you played this some time ago and told me you really liked it. I did. I hadn't gotten around to it. It's I, like a I very streamlined it. race for the galaxy almost. That kind plays of, differently it's each just time. A, it's like combos in a box. I mean, you play the game with eight cards. You have a deck of eight cards and make a bunch of combos in it. It's, it's great. So I'm, I'm glad to see it's doing well. The next two games are big, giant, huge games. They were both one and two on both by number of units sold, which is what we look at, and also by dollar amount sold. Mm -hmm. Number two, I just reviewed. Actually, dollar I didn't review amount. it. It's coming up on Sunday. And that is Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle Earth. This cool. one's doing very well, obviously. And it's Lord of the Rings, Fantasy Flight. Number one is Star Wars Outer Rim. No, because that just came out, so oh. that would be May. Uh, number one is actually from WizKids. We have it on our shelf. I just haven't played it yet. I keep meaning to. It's the latest installment in the Dungeons & Dragons series, the Dungeon of the Mad Mage board oh, game. Oh, okay, okay. But and why, as why always, so their more expensive painted version does almost as well as the non-painted version, People, even though it's more expensive. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's cool. Yeah, I've Lord been of the Rings to... game is definitely a, a solid design, very much like their Mansions of Madness. But if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you're gonna get it. You know, you're gonna get that uh, that theme in there for sure. This is. M have you looked at this one? Is it kind of like more of the same monsters building oh, the more dungeon? More the same. It's very similar to the last one. Kevin Wilson had his uh, fingers in this one too, where he. He messed with things, and they have a better leveling up system. But it's, you know, has some cool miniatures in it, as they yeah. often do. Cool. And it's based in Waterdeep, so that's a popular setting for right. fantasy, or for D&D. &D. All right, two expansions. Top five expansions from March. Number five, an expansion I really like. You guys haven't played yet, but I know you'll enjoy it, and that's the Rebellion expansion for Dice Forge. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Number four is a very expensive expansion where I like half of it. And that's the Roll for the Galaxy Rivalry. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Has three modules. One module adds more stuff. Amazing. One module adds customizable dice. Decent. And then it adds a trading aspect, which just convolutes the game. Hmm. Okay. Number three is an expansion to that game that we can't figure out why it keeps making the top ten. The Deep Space D6, The Endless. This, this you don't ever finish when you play with this one. Well, I'm pretty sure you. The reason this is on the on the thing is because the other one's on the other one. I mean, they're buying both of them together. I, I assume... guess they're really cheap. Like, hey, I can get the game and the expansion for twelve bucks. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's what it is. I guess so. Yeah. Number two, very popular, amazing expansion for Chronicles of Crime Noir. Really like this have one. Played. Oh. You really liked it. I really like this. Yeah. This is better than the base game, which is cool. Whoa. And it's then, new, yeah, because it's different cases and in that setting. And you said mechanically, also, it was really interesting. Yeah, mechanically, instead of just like looking at information about stuff, now you can like beat up us. <laughs> you can, you know, or you can bribe them and stuff. I like that aspect. Oh. Of course, I punched a mob boss, and you shouldn't do that. All right. You could have told me that. That's 
Seems well, I know, but I like it's I did it because I wanted to see what would happen. I was like, well, what would happen if I try this? I'll intimidate the mob boss. Mm -hmm. That don't work. You die. It doesn't. And number one, the latest expansion Swim for Marvel Legendary, and that is the Venom expansion. This game. It's just like the game that. This is a game never that never ends. ends. It's amazing, man. I was just thinking that this must be like the 52nd release for this line of games. Well, this they did. They did Venom and they did uh, Ant Man and Wasp. I'm assuming there will be a Captain Marvel set at some point, right? And there will be another Spider Man one. They made it one for the first movie, so although that got kind of panned because of the stills. Yeah, that's garbage. Uh, but yeah, I guess it still sells really well. At this point, where are people keeping the, their game? There must I, be a lot of content. I mean, is it like a I just, I just ordered. <laughs> Several boxes of the, uh, you know, where I keep my Dominion. I'm getting at least like a two boxes. Lobby type thing? Yeah, I'm getting yeah, at yeah. least two for a legendary and wow. one for Ascension. And these deck building games are gonna, they're so yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's say nay. That was March. Now the April top five expansions. Number five, Chronicles of Crime Noir again, mm -hmm. although it dropped from number two in March. Number four, same exact place, Roll for the Galaxy Rivalry. Mm -hmm. Number three is new, though. It's an expansion we have and haven't played because I don't believe any of us have finished the base game yet. I've only played the first scenario, and that's L.A. Crimes oh, for yeah, Detective. Yeah. Oh. Are you? Yeah. I, I think you could play this one without having played the first one, I'm assuming. I think so, too. Because it's a whole different setting. Yeah, I think so, too. But I want to... I feel like I'm halfway through a movie and I'm gonna abandon that movie and start a different one. I gotta finish. You the do one that thing. all the time. Not movies. You do it with TV series. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but um, no, I don't know. It just feels like I want to push through the. Sto That's the thing. At the end of the day, with these story-driven games, Lord of the Rings, the new one, same deal. You get invested, and that's the game you're playing. You know what I mean? That's that's the one you're sticking with. Yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky, but I, I have to get to it because the core game is a solid design, very immersive. Oh yeah, someone here mentioned that Deep Space D6 is 25 on cool stuff, and expansion is nine dollars. That's not cheap. Yeah. Here's the thing: we're not. Someone said, "Why are you hating on the game?" We're not hating on. We just hate the way it looks. I think it looks really. When you open that up, it looks very prototypey. I thought it did not. There's a very little color. I will, it might be amazing. It I might will be. play it soon, and I will review it soon. Um, but it does not inspire me to take it off the shelf. That's important. You know, you want that game to look good. You want people to go, ooh, this looks good. Let me play it. Somebody said before the reprint it was $60? Well, there's probably very few copies and so the price went up. Rarity, and maybe okay. that's why it selling so high. People are like, ah. Oh. And, yeah. and there is a lot of people, there's a big group of people who like solitary games. Sure. So, mm -hmm. all right, number two in April for expansions. This one I really enjoyed, and that is Shy Pluto. The emergence mm. of Shy Pluto for Space Base. Why is it called Shy Pluto? Shy Pluto? It's their nickname for this satellite. It actually doesn't have anything to do with Pluto. Is it? Is it sheepish and shy? I think it's because it hides its butt. I don't know what the thing is. <laughs> it, I don't think hiding your butt makes you shy. Uh, yeah, you kind of need to hide your butt. It means <laughs> makes you modest. <laughs> modest, yeah. It makes you not an animal. Right. Not shy. Alrighty. And then finally, this last expansion we have yet to play. We were talking <laughs> about it right before we started this stream. And that is the newest module for Time Stories. Yeah. Madame. Ah, yes. Look at that cover blending right in. So it looks like it floating cups and letters. Yeah, it does. It actually looks pretty cool in there. Um, <laughs> but this does go to show you that even though Time Stories were kind of like, eh, those modules still sell. Yeah. And this is per units, right? Is how we're basing this. The number of units that sold is how you got um, this list. Uh, yes, per yeah. units. Uh, I don't have the other numbers in front of me right now. Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. It's also, I think, the fact that they announced this is the last one. I think is helping them. Well, I really do. Before the reboot, right? Oh, I mean, for this game. Yeah, and if you played this were, expansion, don't spoil it for us yet because we want to play it. And I thought they were, like, revamping Time Stories. They are, but they're like, you can play just that. You can, you know, it's not going to be compatible. Not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, no I think spoilers. they're just repurposing the theme, really. I think it's a different game. Oh, really? I no spoilers. So. What, was, what was I spoiling? 
What are you I talking said about? it as the final one. Maybe that. That's not a spoiler. Oh, we that's, know that. That's... It's the final one. Alrighty. Well, that's the top sellers for March and April. Once again, thanks to Cool Stuff for giving me the information. Okay, so we'll take some questions here real quickly. If you have any questions for the three of us to discuss in our back talk, and I'm gonna take a little nap while we're waiting. I don't know. I'm a little tired. You're tired? It's Friday, man. Why are you tired? I don't know why I'm tired. You need some security? I don't know how to answer that, Papa Bear. <laughs> what do we got? <laughs> Sam's a five-year-old child. Got one last no! chance. No! One last chance. One last chance. All right. I'm trying game. Yeah, the next time stories modules will be self-contained. Don't need a base game. I'm pleased right, about right, that. Correct. Actually, we got a cool thing in the mail today. Ex the newest exit game is like twice the size of the other ones. Sort of a, a two-parter in one box. All right, it says all three of us use the word grok occasionally. Have you read Stranger to Strangeland and what do you think of it? Yes, I've read it ages ago. I have also read it. I actually don't care for the book that I don't much. Like it either. It's I don't like Robert Highland's writing very much. I like Robert Highland pre- I like when he wrote more action-based stuff, young adult stuff, sure. like Space, Starship Troopers and a lot of those young. Then he started trying to write more, for lack of better terms, they got a little... Things. Right, and that... I like The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. That's my favorite book of his. No, that's a good one, but that's back in the exciting action stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he is talking about reading books. Sorry, Sam. Nerds. <laughs> um... <laughs> Does a computer version of a game make you more likely to sell a physical copy of a game? Uh, probably. I would assume so. Wait, what was that? Yeah, I would say yes, because I, I, I would have got rid of Ascension. I haven't yet, but I mean, I'm like, why do I need it? I got the, I got the app for it. Are you going to see Detective Pikachu? Nope. <laughs> probably. That's a hard pass <laughs> for me. Uh, my kids are like, please. Yeah, of course. You got to go with the kids. It's like, it looks stupid. <laughs> Although, I got to say, sometimes I, some of the things that I think are stupid, like my kids keep watching these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoons, and I'm like, this seems dumb. And I watch them, I'm like, this is pretty good. The one I finally saw last night was uh, the Spider-Man movie, the animated one. What, it took you that long? Did yeah. you like it? I liked it, yeah. It's like an assault on the senses, though. Yeah, but I really liked that. I thought it was. it felt like you were watching a comic book. Yeah, hmm. yeah, but some of the scenes, like the final fight kind of stuff, and some of the fights in the middle also was just sort of, I mean, I don't know how else to put it, an assault on sight and sound. I'm okay like, with that. Oh, my goodness. I can't imagine having seen that at the movie theater, actually. I think I might have been bothered and or overwhelmed. If you had to choose between Paladins of the West Kingdom or Reavers of Midgard, which one? Come I on, I don't I, even answer these questions anymore. Why? Because it's... If That's I had two to, prototypes, isn't I'm it? I'm asking you which one you like better. Yeah, but... I know I'm going to answer the question. Reavers, Reavers. and Midgard. And I'm going to say Paladins, and now the question was Invalid. pointless. <laughs> but the reason is, is because you don't mind so much of a solitaire experience. No, the, the reason is I haven't played the other one. That's true. <laughs> okay. The person who's played both games, it's because I like a more interactive experience, which is what Reavers gives you. Paladins also, is a little bit. Vikings. No, I don't. No, that actually has very little to do with the fact that I like Reavers better. But you didn't better. say nothing. You said very little. Very little to do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can we talk about the Endgame movie? We're not going to spoil no. it, but no, we said we liked it or not? Uh, we've said that already. Yeah, we okay. really liked it. It was yeah, garbage. It's, it's fantastic. How about this? What are your feelings? That's funny. We got a $2 message retracted. All right. <laughs> but thank you, Ben. <laughs> um, what are your feelings on wallet games? Wallet games? They're like these. Uh, but yeah. Button Shy makes a lot of them. They're like little games. They're basically micro games. Yeah. They're really small games. I'll let you guys take that. I don't know. I feel like, again, there are more and more games coming out, and I don't mind if there's different but there, there's more design space being explored. But talk about asking to get buried under the wave. You know what I mean? I, they, did you see the wallet game booth at PAX Unplugged where he had them all like on the wall and I stuff? It was, so. it was neat, right? There's like all these games. But I don't know a single one 
Now I know people who there are people who subscribe. To, I think they subscribe to him. Basically, it's like a monthly. You get a monthly yeah, game. Correct. That would also that would worry me on a general basis because I don't think any designer could publish a good game monthly. Sure. Right. So how do you know you're getting a good one or not? And I guess you could wait till no, they come I out mean, and find out. But for me, a small game has to be so good for me to play it over a bigger game. Right. I just, I mean, it makes me want to harken back to the days of, days of wonder, where they came out with one big, good, gorgeously produced, illustrated game a year. Nobody does that anymore. What company can you think of that really does that? Well, AEG just said they're going to I know, do they few. did. Yeah, I, I read the article, but, you know, they said we're coming down from 20-some to five. I'm okay with five. Well, and technically, Days of Wonder did do maybe one smaller you know, game like slash Renegade expansion. Renegade Game Studios used to do that. Yeah, sure. They went the other way. Simon, or come on, used to do that. They went the other way. There's somebody know. else who does a few games. Oh, Stonemaier. That's true. He does one big game and a year, And they are usually. all hits. You They're know, all good. But that's maybe the reason. So when you publish, you know, 23 little tiny games, I worry that you're hurting yourself is my point. 12 hours for TI4 is twice as long as you should be taking. So, yes, it is ridiculous. Um, We've played how many players? Six player games in about six hours? Five yeah. And six. Five and a half, six hours. So you're, you're definitely taking twice as long as you should. <clears throat> Starship Troopers was originally meant to be in his juvenile line. The publisher rejected it, said Kabuki Kid. But the fact is, I think that his quote unquote. I, I've never really understood this whole young adult fiction because a lot of young adult fiction, like The Reckoners, is considered young adult. Mm -hmm. I read it and it's, it's really good. I don't know why. Oh, it's just like there's no. It's like PG, I guess, is the word. But, sure. it, but it almost makes it sound like an adult shouldn't read it. No, no. Well, the problem with a book versus, say, a TV show or a movie is you upscale when you read like when someone gets shot or like with a, an energy beam when I'm reading it that dude got obliterated but it doesn't say that well sometimes right? it if says I'm watching it. it on the screen they either put the blood in or they don't don't you know so young adult is just sometimes a little well too juvenile in its themes <laughs> but um, somebody, I think somebody says I love Martin wallet games <laughs> Uh, Martin Wallet. <laughs> wow, dude, that's like a good idea for him to start, right? Martin Wallet. The, yeah. the Wallet. The, wa <laughs> the Martin Wallet game series. Um, let's see here. We're talking about books. Who do we care who ends up in the Iron Throne? I hope it's some random dude, some some beggar walks in, and sits down, and they're like, "Hi, you're in now. <laughs> it's you." Uh, I would pick some minor character. I think it should be one of the wolves. There are none left. Shut up. Spoilers. Oof. That's Brian Whipple true, gave actually. us I'm $10. Wrong. Well, that's nice. He said, thanks for answering my question. I love all, all the videos with all three of you together. Need a new Miami Dice. Uh, we have not done a Miami Dice in a long time. That's true. Tom trying to save on a Dice Tower budget by doubling his business security. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, some of the, anyway, uh, have you encountered any new exciting board game mechanisms lately? I don't know. I played a lot of games I really enjoyed, but nothing that was like, that folding space, maybe. Yeah. That was different. Of course, that Kickstarter didn't go anywhere. Yeah. I don't know. I think, um... The only thing I can think of, and I've already talked about it in this video a little bit, was um, that's not a new mechanism, it's just sort of a new approach, is that Res Arcana game feels like you do a lot with very little, but you don't get a little in the box. You know what I mean? It's not like Love Letter has 16 cards or whatever. Yeah. In that game, you use eight cards. You also have one mage. And there's a couple of other things on the table, right? But it comes with a lot more cards. I like that idea. I don't mind a game that feels like a micro game, but that's not all you get. There's a, there's a plethora of variability there. I like that. 
I don't know that a game it's has to offer mechanism. something new for me to. I mean, I can really enjoy. Like we were talking about this, the Lord of the Rings game didn't really do anything new. Mm -hmm. The combat was from X-wing and sure. you know th these different things. I don't care if I still enjoy the game. I don't care if it. I don't have to see something new. I just want to see something good. I agree, a hundred percent. Um. We will do this sometime. Someone said it's a top 10. Can we react to the first 10 entries in the Board Game Geek database? That might be an interesting thing to do sometime, to go through those. Hmm. Like the actual I did it, first. I did it solo one time, but we could go through them I've sometime. Done it, I've done it solo as well. Well, I guess uh, <laughs> I'll get on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll cut the two videos of you guys together, <laughs> and I'll react. <laughs> no, I don't think that'll work, because it'll be two different top 10s almost. Yeah, but like you'll say something and I'll just feel myself going, hmm, <laughs> and splice it. Uh, do I paint my own? No, I don't paint my own miniatures, actually. most of, More often than not, whenever I'm painting something, it's usually for somebody else. I paint them for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tom does it for me, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, blah, blah, blah. Is there a big enough market for gangster mafia games? I don't know if it's a huge no. market. What's the biggest mafia game you can think of? Mafia. Yeah, but even that got supplanted by Werewolf. You're right. Actually, I don't know what is the biggest game with that theme. Have any of them done well? I don't think so. I mean, are any of them the, like Evergreen? Even the Godfather game we saw sold at Christmas time, like and that's got an IP. For Ten bucks at Marshalls or something. Marshalls, yeah, no, <laughs> it's got no, Godfather no, no, no. sitting all over the place. If Godfather's had had some neat component I could use in other games, I would have probably bought six of them. <laughs> I don't think, uh, no, I don't think it's a surefire bet theme. The review for the uh, new Batman game will be hours long? No, I, I don't know how we're going to do that, actually. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could review each thing. I don't know how much. I'm going to have to play a, a, a thing of Batman. Because I, I remember when Conan came out, I was like, that was fun scenario. Let's try a different one. Ooh, this one feels different. I like that. Sure. Batman seems like there's just, it's, you know, I think it's one of the first Kickstarters where I got everything. Normally, I get the base game. I'm like, all right, let's try this. I got everything here, and I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm treading water. Like, oh, look at all these miniatures. Where do I start? I don't even know. I know. It's too much. It really is. Yeah. Has anybody have complained about that uh, rule book yet? I'm curious how they yes. did with that. <laughs> yeah, really. It looks great, but there's been a lot of complaints about the rule book for Batman. That's yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. I think they've already released a a player aid. That wasn't in the box. That wasn't in the box, yes. Why? Um, I don't know why. Oh. Gamer Shelter, 10 bucks. Thank you. He says, I've been inspired. I've been watching for so many years and never remember to donate, so... Here you go. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Can you update the essential top 10? I was waiting until we got to a million views on it. It's like at 830 or something like that. Click, click, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to see 170,000 tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Um, that uh, would be a good one to revisit at some point. I'm sure we'll sure. do Sure. We do it like every three years, I think, and it's getting pretty close. I don't need... I feel like mine would be pretty different. I think it's going to always be different because uh, there's always a game like Catan might have been on it at one point. It wouldn't be on it anymore for me. Who knows? Yeah. That's a tricky one. Um, they, there, people are saying you said you were going to review Nemo's War and you never did. He said he was learning it and was going to do so, but it never came. Nemo's War? I know. It's a beast of a game. It's a solitaire game with a lot of overhead. Um, it's it's out there. It's on my shelf. I need to get to it, but it's too much, everybody. We're working on it. Hard. First, I'll play Deep Space D6 because that's tiny. Any vicious fishes reprint news? <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked that? Who asked that? <laughs> Gator Dave. Gator Dave is crazy. Uh, we're still in talks with several of the pub bigger publishers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Mattel, right. Mattel and Hasbro. Uh, you should just kickstart it. <laughs> you know, I probably would get money if I kickstarted it. I'd have to be careful. That would. I'm th I'm, I think we should rework it. Look, cut me in for like 3%. And I'll help you rework it. Is anyone out there willing to do 2? 1%. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Hmm. I uh, would not. I would not. After all the garbage I give other people about kickstarting their own games, uh, no. I would not kickstart my own game at this point. Wow, man. The, the, the amount of work, we're just looking at right now, we're doing, uh, we're working to get the different promo items for our Dice Hour Kickstarter mm -hmm. and going over those. Can you imagine doing that for every a aspect of a game? I mean, oh, we're just doing some tough. dice it's and tough. stuff, and it's a lot of work. We have to check it. We say, this is what the color I want. It comes in. You're like, oh, that's not the color I thought it would be. <laughs> it's a lot, you know, but if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. That's the thing. It's, it's an endeavor. Kabuki has a uh, vote of no confidence in you, buddy. For what? L LOL. I had a feeling Z would abandon it too much for him. That's rude. <laughs> Kabuki kid. Oh, someone actually posted here that the top uh, gangster games on uh, Board Game Geek, Godfather's number one, then Cash and Guns. That one's pretty popular. Sure. And Sons of Anarchy, and then some game called Nothing Personal. <laughs> Am I number four? Woo! Yeah, 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 that's great. Um, does, Tom, does Sam and Z do a live stream where they cut Tom Harris while he's sleeping? What was this? Like the story of Samson? I'm like, I already was weak to begin with. You cut my hair. Power, I'm like, oh yeah. no, I can't even I can't pick, I can't pick up a piece of paper. <laughs> I'm like, ah, ah. Can't get up. Um, Kevin Owens, little finger, thank you. Little finger. Oh, no. <laughs> Chris Diaz. I've caught up with Five Game of Thrones, by you, the sir. way. For those of you out there who care, I've seen it now. Have you ever, oh, Chris asked a question. He says, have you ever reviewed a game positively but later realized it wasn't good? I don't think so. I might eventually not like it as much. Yeah, that's it. I don't know that it's like, wait a minute. This sucks. <laughs> what <laughs> was I thinking? <laughs> you're playing and you're like, wait. Holy boy, I was wrong. <laughs> I had to run home. No, I know what you're saying. I mean, there are big games I've, I've played and I liked them initially, and as the years went by, and we're talking years, where I'm like, yeah, I don't really like this as much anymore. Of course. Tastes change. And the, the opposite is also true. Like, I remember when I first reviewed... Uh, Arkham Horror, the card game, the living card game. I gave it a good review, but I think I rated it a 7.5 or an 8, maybe. I mean, now it's like one of my favorite games ever. It's grown. Some do the opposite. Some games you play, and then after you've played them 15 times, you're like, well, kind of done with it. You know, I try to predict some of that when I do my reviews to give you an idea of how much longevity I think is in there, but... It's hard to nail that down. We'd never get any reviews done if we explored the, the full depths of that. Yeah, and also I hear, you know, I was listening to a podcast just yesterday where they were talking about they liked this game, and after six plays, they, didn't, they thought they explored it completely, and I thought, but that seems okay to me. Depending on and how big the game person, was. It was a smaller right, game. that's just that person, yeah. Uh, some random person says, Tom's such a troll, he always calls me somebody. Oh, I, I apologize. Um, <laughs> I've done a publisher and game designer series. How about an artist series? The reason I've always shied from doing art... So you can't draw. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, it's... You can only talk about art so much, right? I mean, like, I really like this. Look at the colors, the curves, you know, the... the curves? What are you looking at? The curves, <laughs> The curves are the yeah, lines! Mm -hmm. um, the problem with that is... You can talk theory, right? That's fine. But at the end of the day, it's the one thing that I can show you and you know if you like or you don't. And sometimes That's I'll the like problem. a certain style in a particular game that I wouldn't like it. I don't know how to explain it. Right, but at the end of the day, you don't have to explain it. That's the problem. Why? When I, when I, in my reviews, I barely cover artwork. I say it's good or bad, obviously, in my opinion. But it's the one thing you know without watching a review. Really, the only thing you know. You can look at a cover or a piece of artwork and go, I like that. Yeah. Or I don't. But you know that instantaneously. There's that Space Race game we were talking about the other day, though. Mm -hmm. That has a really boring cover. Mm -hmm. But it's the cards that are in it that right. have, the, have the good artwork. So sometimes, sometimes, it's not readily apparent. But most of the time it is, yeah. No, I mean, like, if people see that picture, they'll readily know if yeah, they like yeah, it yeah. or not. Right. There's no discussion to be had, is my point. Mm-hmm. 
So which Game of Thrones game is the best? Could there be a top 10? I don't think I've played 10. For Sam, it would be the one we just played, probably. Wait, what did they ask? Game Which of Thrones Game of Thrones board game is the best? Oh, yeah, Oathbreaker was really fun for me. Probably Game of Thrones. Did they say episodes or games? No, oh, games. Yeah, they said games. Um, you want them to say it. No, he I wants thought, you to I ask episodes. You said that. No, I don't know. There's not that many games based on Game of Thrones, are There's there? Game of Thrones. There's the card game. No, I mean, there's the big board game from Fantasy Flight. First there's and the second card edition. Game. There's the Cosmic Encounter Card edition, one. first and second edition. Those yeah, that's different. true. There's the Cosmic Encounter thing. Whatever, whatever that, that was called. called. <laughs> I yeah. can't even remember now. Oath There's Breaker. one we just played, Oathbreaker. Oathkeeper. Stop. <laughs> Little Finger, the party game. <laughs> Little Finger, the party. One, two, three. Huh. And you point your little finger at someone, and then they have to tell you a truth or a lie. If you guess it correctly. You drink? Yeah. It's a very different game. No, that's Tyrion Lannister's. I'm pretty uh, sure that's called game. Never Have I Ever. Never Have I Ever Littlefinger Edition. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you have your board game collection insured? I'm pretty sure you can. Um, you can have anything insured. Yeah, any, any. I insured my hat collection. Physical. Right. I wouldn't put it past you. Any material possession, I believe, can be insured. Technically, our board game collection is insured. It's in the storage center. We have insurance on that storage yeah, center. Yeah. yeah. Because if that goes down, oh my goodness, I could, the work, it wouldn't even be the money. It would be the, I'd be like, oh, we got to hunt down all these games all right. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roy Everett says, what two-player filler games do you like? <laughs> well, I want to be clear it wasn't you. Two-player filler games? Memoir 44. <laughs> Hey, uh, one I just played, I'm actually reviewing it, I think, tomorrow, is that new Land, Air, and Sea from uh, Arcane no Wonders. Heroes. That was pretty no good. No heroes. No, not heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, just Land, Air, and Sea. Yeah. Uh, that was a good two-player filler, I would call mm -hmm. that. Res Arcana is not a filler, I think. It, no. It's got a little bit too long for that. I've played a scenario of Memoir 44 in 30 minutes, set up and tear down. Lost Cities. He doesn't care. Wait, if we don't laugh at the joke, that means that's not a joke. That's awesome. That's absolute truth. It ain't a filler. No one is called Memoir 44 a filler. We have I used, I have filler, experienced man. it as a filler. <laughs> what did you say? It's a land filler, man. Oh, no. Boo. That's not <laughs> I don't know. I would go with maybe like Seven Wonders Duel. That's that's a good one. We'll talk about our origins plan soon. Uh, Z and Roy are going, uh, but right now we got to... UK Games Expo and Come On Con are like two weeks away. Come so on Come Expo. on Expo. Come on Expo. Otherwise, it sounds really stupid. Come well, on Con. Well. You can dance to that if you say it enough. <laughs> Come on Con. Come on Con. Is there censorship on, on this site? Yes. Yes. And I would never feel bad about that. We'll censor what we want. Yeah, we can censor all the night away. It's our YouTube channel. If you so can censor, I, mean, I can't remember the rest we of the can, words. We can kind of pick and choose what, what we like, don't want people to say. You won't feel like you can dance if you want to, babe? We can censor if we want to. You can censor if you want to. It doesn't fit. <laughs> it doesn't know, fit at all. Doesn't. Sorry. Um, Game of Thrones tic-tac-toe? Oh. They want to see Z do a total review just using the tiny hands. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That would be... Oh, that would be really hard to do. Yeah, it would. Everything would take forever. Flip a card. Oh. Ah. Yep. No, I refuse. I refuse. Uh, Two-player filler, someone said. Hanami Koji, Jaipur, Fox in the Forest. See, there you go. That's what you should have said. I didn't have to because I already have and people know it's true. Oh, excuse me. So somebody me. else said it for me. <laughs> what are the rules? Of our censorship, it's family friendly, and don't be a jerk. Wow, look at this guy. This guy that is seems like, like two simple rules. It's right? all in That's caps now. Simple why? It's all in caps. Is there censorship on this site? Yes, we'll censor you when we want to. But I mean, I'm pretty sure we're being trolled right now. I don't know. What's <laughs> going yes. on, Calm down. Out here, let us. <laughs> I'll let troll us, you let right us show back. you how it works. <laughs> Block. No. 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 <laughs> I block people on YouTube when they make personal attacks. Right. I block them for excessive crudity, profanity, whatever. Those are the main two things. Or, again, being a jerk. For example, spoiling a movie for other people. You're a jerk. Right. You know. 
Even though the Russo brothers have lifted the spoiler ban, uh, I don't think it's... They officially lifted the spoiler ban? What well, is that because about? they did that Spider-Man Endgame trailer, or Far From Home trailer, which had spoilers in it. Sure. So they basically said the they said basically don't talk about the movie for two weeks. It doesn't matter. We're not going to anyway. Yeah. Now, we might maybe like in a month or two we'll do a retrospective. If you haven't seen it by then, I don't know what to tell you. The people waiting for it on video, I guess. I guess so. I oh, this this is actually a good rule, a good rule for 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 the censorship. Brent Ben Powell says no Alan Moon jokes in the chat. <laughs> That's a good rule of thumb. Good job. The chat is weird today. Full moon. Uh, you may be talking about scorpions, Samuel. Did you did you post something about the scorpion? No, that's Trevor. Trevor. Trevor How did he know about the, the scorpion? He's the one that trolls about the scorpions. No, no, no. He's no. I killed another scorpion a couple of days uh, yesterday. Yeah. It was. I, it was, I, I that stomped was not on a, it. That was not a. Yeah, it, I went to go get the 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 poison to humanely kill it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I came running in. I'm ready. Sam had already stomped it. What yes. is? What? Yes, I felt, yes, I felt yes. cheated. What are, you, are you worried that people are going to get mad at us for killing a scorpion? Yes. Whatever. <laughs> I just want to publicly make a statement that I uh, don't uh, necessarily, my views don't. Uh, what? Oh, whatever. Uh, you know, yeah, whatever. Z had pom poms out. I was like, woo! Yeah. <laughs> Came he, in was, today. he was standing right next to me, and if I hadn't stepped on it, he would have. No, you wouldn't have. No, I would not have. I would have slapped her across the face a little bit. <laughs> what you doing in this house? <laughs> Get out of here. Yes, we have scorp. Actually, it's weird because in Homestead, like I've never seen scorpions except in this like we two square miles. Scorpions around. around here, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I've seen them over at the church, your church, which is just a couple miles, a well, half mile down the road. I've seen little scorpions there before. Mm -hmm. Cute baby scorpions. But like in our houses and stuff, I've never. Cute. I've never seen they, anything. They have little scorpions. Yeah, it's just that nope. it's because I think we live in a really wooded area here. I mean, if you think about Florida, it has snakes and alligators and all that, and yet I've never, in my like in my neighborhood, I've never seen an alligator. I've never seen snakes. Some people do, especially a little farther north. Sure. The one thing that you'll see down here, lizards are everywhere. People. And frogs sometimes. Yeah. People. Like you'll be walking at night and you'll see this big bullfrog just sitting on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Just looking at you, um, and of course, bugs, mosquitoes, and Especially man, we on had this, the highway. <laughs> the love bug infestation. I came back. All three of us, we came back from Orlando. We all were or different places, and Laura said that they had to. She said she still didn't get everything out, and she oh, went in there crazy. and sprayed it down. The, my, I had to stop at a gas station. I could not see out my window practically. That because made, of the love bugs? Oh my word! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was they love loved, bug. They loved all I was just over telling, our windshield. Was I was just telling it that sometimes when you th drive through a swarm of them, you have to pull off and clean it off. Otherwise, it's really hard to get their, you know, dead carcasses off the front of your vehicle. It wasn't a swarm. It was a pl one of the ten a plagues. Plague. Yeah, that's it what I'm was, talking about. It's horrible. Like, we, I stopped at the gas station, and it just looked like a, a school bus came by. And I was like, oh, my word. It just <laughs> covered with bugs everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you still don't go hungry on the highway. <laughs> Uh, this is the second time this has been asked. What did you guys think of Blood on the Clock Tower? I don't. We think haven't played. We it. haven't it's played like, it yet. So we very rarely. The only time we'll play a Kickstarter game is a paid playthrough, and mm -hmm. other than that, or if somehow they somebody they get Sam to play it at a con, those are, that's when it happens. Mm -hmm. Really. And other than that, I'll just patiently <coughs> wait till it comes out. Yeah. Oh, I guess I played Paladins, but that was like almost finished too. Yeah. Um, is blood rage appropriate for families? How violent is it? I've also read negative things about a certain clan's attire. The serpent clan is, yeah, scandally clad people. Um, females. Uh, is it appropriate for families? I don't know. I don't know your family. Um, In fact, if you don't paint is it, it, it's better. Is it violent? What, what game is this? Blood rage. It's called blood rage. I know, but <laughs> the, the game itself is not... Of course it's violent. What kind of question is that? It's called Blood Rage. It's about killing other people. But it's not depicted. That's, that's what I think they're yeah, but inferring. What, what board game does depict it? Hate? Others? No, but even others. I just, just think the others does not have any worse artwork than... 
Oh, hey, yes, for sure. What are you talking about? Other, the others? Yeah, all of the all of the, the, the seven sins. They're all very grotesquely depicted, and but none of them mean violent. But sure, but rising. But it, yeah, but it's rising a pictorial sun, representation. Rising sun has that too, though. Rising sun. Right. Probably. I would say I would say that rising sun and the others is more violently depicted than blood rages. Well, okay, that's true. Again, I guess it means thematic. I mean, there's like versus... blood and gore on some of those guys, and it's, you know, you I don't so. see that, and it's not in Blood Rage. That's what I mean. Yes, the theme of Blood Rage is a violent theme. You're talking about uh, different clans of Vikings fighting against each other and being destroyed in Ragnarok. Yes, that's violent, but does the game showcase that? I don't think so. I think if you're asking the question, yes, it's violent. Sure, that's that's don't always play that. with your family. Bottom line is, I don't know your family, so my I can't first that blood rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's gonna come out soon. You have these okay. guys walk up and I'll be like, "It's on." <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's Hunter, my little Hunter knows rage. what it's about. He says shoe is the best poison for scorpions. He's from Texas, and we got scorpions, a lot of scorpions. In Fantastic. Texas, so. All right, well that's that. Let's uh, let's let's shut this one down. Oh, come to Buckeye Game Fest in September. We'd love to, but we're running the Dice Tower Retreat in September. If you haven't signed up for Dice Tower Retreat, I'm serious. It is super awesome. There's all these games we're talking about. Big library. There's more games than people by far which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to play. I play more games at Dice Star Retreat than any other con. That's probably true, yeah. This is now a, with no That's scorpions. an interesting question. It's not here. Like right here. Where are the scorpions? There's no scorpions at the hotel. That, don't be scared. Of course not. People. Oh. It's, a, it's a great place. You definitely should come. Um, everybody who came last time really has had everything I've seen has been positive. Right. And you're right. It was just, just gaming. Pure on a dolls rated fun gaming, man. What and I got time? some tricks up my sleeve. We'll do our key lime pie buffet again. Nice. We'll have the big prize table, which was really fun. It'll be yes. even better this year. Yes. Um, and some other stuff. You'll see. Okay, we're going to end this. We'll be back live on Monday. I'll be doing a Q&A then. And then Tuesday, testing Tuesday, we're going to be playing Zombie Side Invader. Ooh. Where we will lose. Because I don't know that I've ever Ow. won a Zombie Side game. I heard I? this one was really easy. <laughs> <laughs> I almost believed you there. I was like, wait, what? Acting? <laughs> it's like lying professionally. It's fun. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Have a great day, everybody. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Back talk, snack talk, whack talk.